Ladies and gentlemen, yes, great to see you today and thank you for taking the time to join us on this very, very special edition of our travel show. Yes, this is Travel in Japan. We are going through the seasons of Japan today, starting in cherry blossom, yes, the very popular season, the beautiful buds which are happening right now as we're watching this show. We're also going to be going through the autumn, yes, looking at the fantastic autumn leaves, the beautiful colours there in the autumn season, culminating today in, would you believe it, yes, Christmas in Japan as well, the snowy peaks, the snow monkeys, it has absolutely everything for you. And ladies and gentlemen, as you very well know, Japan has been voted the number one destination to visit in 2024 and 2025 by several of the UK's leading travel publications as well. So it really is the destination to visit. As always with our travel shows, we're going to be going on virtual journeys. We're going to be hearing from the experts as well. And please stay tuned to the end of today's very special show because that's when we're opening up, yes, the VIP Travel Lounge, which is your opportunity to meet the travel experts, to get up close to them and ask them all the questions that you want to ask about anything in today's show. So, ladies and gentlemen, are you ready? Suitcases packed, passports ready? I think let's go to Japan. So, ladies and gentlemen, yes, this is our Japan Through the Seasons show. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, you may be thinking, well, Japan, Wendy Wu tours? Why Wendy Wu tours for Japan? Well, 14 consecutive years, Wendy Wu tours have won Best Specialist Operator at the Globe Awards, the biggest awards in the travel industry. And here to tell us more about why Wendy Wu tours, it's Kate Rowe. Kate, good to see you. Thanks for having me, Andy. It's good to be here. Brilliant. Now, Kate is Head of Reservations and Operations at Wendy Wu So, Kate, you are pretty busy at the moment with your team. We are. I mean, it's fantastic. This year, we've seen so many inquiries coming through, so many people booking to get away. And so our reservations team are really busy on the phones. And our operations team are super busy right now with uh, all the tours that are on the ground. Uh, we actually, right now, are in the middle of cherry blossom season in Japan. So, uh, yeah, it's busy, busy times. Now, I've got to ask you, Kate, Wendy Wu tours, they seem to be everywhere, ladies and gentlemen. What is it about Wendy Wu tours? Well, as you mentioned, Andy, we are an award-winning tour specialist, and we're really proud of those awards because that's customers, uh, travel agents, people that we work with in the industry that have voted for us uh, and you know proclaimed that we are the number one specialist from the UK to Japan. And that means that we have many, many years of experience and that our teams have worked really hard to design the perfect itineraries for customers to travel to Japan. So on those itineraries, of course, they're going to take you to the main sites that you want to see in Japan, but they're also going to take you a little bit off the beaten track, perhaps show you some of the hidden gems that you wouldn't have been able to find if you'd been traveling to Japan yourself. Our tours are also fully inclusive. And that's a little bit different from how some other tour operators work, but it's something that we believe is really important for our customers and the way they like to travel. That means that you see one price advertised on our website or in the brochure, and that includes everything for your trip. So it includes your flight from the UK out to Japan and home again. It includes all of your touring, so all your itinerary, your sightseeing. You've got a guide with you the whole time during your trip. You've got all of your accommodation included, and you've also got all of your meals included. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner for every day during your tour. So we really do take care of absolutely everything, Andy. And just to touch back on the experiences, as well as the sightseeing, we really do jam pack our itineraries with some really authentic experiences. Again, these are things that you wouldn't be able to find or do if you were in Japan without Wendy Wu tour and without your guide. So that might include a traditional tea ceremony. It might include a calligraphy lesson and learning to write your own name in a Japanese script. 
uh, lots of experiences, cookery courses, visits to hidden gems, uh, things that make your Wendy Wu tour extra authentic. It sounds incredible. Okay, I've got to say, before today's show, I did a little bit of homework, ladies and gentlemen, and looked at some of the reviews for Wendy Wouters. And one thing that comes across time and time again, as you mentioned already, is the guides and the quality of the guides. Yeah, we're really proud of the guides that we uh, work with in Japan and all around the world. We always use local guides who are from the destination that you're traveling in, and they can really help you to unlock a destination, find out more. And, you know, of course, some of our guides might be experts in history or architecture, but the, the most important thing is that they are all experts in Japan, and they are really going to help you and understand the country that you're traveling in and talk to you about their childhood and their school system or talk to you about what the latest pop hit is in Japan. They're going to help you understand the food that you're eating and they're going to be able to point out to you some of the traditions, uh, some of the sights that you're seeing whilst you're traveling. Fantastic. Now, Kate, okay, today's show is Japan through the seasons. Obviously, at the moment, it's all about cherry blossom, as you well know, and your mm -hmm. team. but. You have tours going throughout the year. I mean, you're, you're taking a lot of people to Japan throughout the year. What, what are the other seasons like? Yeah, absolutely. So as I mentioned earlier, we're in the middle of cherry blossom right now. And right now, as of today, we have about 50 different tour groups in Japan. So they are all traveling on their itineraries, all spread out in different places across the country. But that just gives you an idea of why we are the specialist. We do have all those customers traveling um, you know, constantly we're using their feedback to keep improving the tours um, and to make sure that our itineraries are as fantastic as can be. And outside of Cherry Blossom, you know, there's fantastic other seasons that you can uh, visit Japan in. So I think one of the other most popular times is autumn. So all of those trees that have been covered in the beautiful cherry blossom in the spring are of course covered in autumnal colours. And so you get these beautiful views, the, the temples that you're visiting, the gardens that you're visiting on your tour, um, your photos are just going to be elevated by the beautiful colours of the autumn leaves at that time of year. And uh, outside of even spring and autumn, we've also got a tour going to Japan for Christmas. So you really can go to Japan at whatever time of the year suits you. And our Christmas tour you knows a particularly special time. Kate, it sounds wonderful. You certainly sold it to me. We can see, ladies and gentlemen, why Wendy Wu Tours are the number one specialist to Japan. Kate, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thanks, Andy. So ladies and gentlemen, what better way to start our traveling today in the most popular season to travel in Japan. Yes, it is the spring, the cherry blossom, those fantastic blooms are out now, also known as Sakura in Japan. So let's take a look at this.
Hello, my name is Peter Crane. I'm Product Director here at Wendy Wu Tours. And it's my pleasure to welcome you in this cherry blossom season to one of our favorite destinations in the world, Japan. Whether you visit Japan in March or April for the springtime cherry blossom season, or choose to travel in the equally spectacular autumn leaves season in September and October, when Japan's famous ornamental gardens are arguably at their very best, Japan is the destination that apparently has it all, a quite extraordinary history and cultural traditions like no other, exquisite art and exquisite architecture. Sensational food, where every mouthful seems designed to offer up a different taste, and landscapes that are famous the world over, including this site, the iconic and perfectly symmetrical silhouette of Mount Fuji, Japan's highest point and regarded by many as its spiritual heart. So today I'd like to introduce you to the most popular of our 11 escorted group tours in Japan. This is a 17 day tour called Japan Uncovered, which in our view will show you the very best this country has to offer in a two week holiday. Starting in Osaka, the tour takes in the cultural highlights of Nara, Miyajima and Kyoto, then heads north to the Japanese Alps and uh, where we experience the beauty of the rural landscapes of Kanazawa, Takayama and Nagano before exploring the equally spectacular region around Mount Fuji and ending the tour at Tokyo, a capital city like no other. We travel mainly by coach, um, following the, the normal Wendy Wu policy of allowing 1.5 seats per passenger, uh, and occasionally by bullet train as well, as I'll describe. The tour is escorted by a driver and a national guide, whose job it is to take care of you and all the logistics of the tour, from organising the excursions, the meals and everything else. The tour is fully inclusive, so you don't have to worry about paying extra for meals, for excursions or any of the many other activities included in the tour. We start in Osaka, Japan's third largest city, with a reputation for its flamboyance, its fun-loving people and most of all for its food. The street food here is out of this world, with local specialities like okonomiyaki, a Japanese style savoury pancake made from shredded cabbage, green onion and often added pork and other seafood fillings. From Osaka we visit nearby Nara, the first recognised capital of Japan, with no less than eight UNESCO listed historical sites. And also this place, pictured here, Osaka Castle, built in 1583 in a lovely hilltop location overlooking the whole city of Osaka. The following day we drive west to Himeji Castle. This castle is older still, it dates back to 1333. Of all the castles in Japan, this must be the most impressive for its size and for its beauty. Locally, it's known as the White Heron Castle and the lines of the architecture, along with its painted white exterior, do make it feel as light as a bird's taking off. On a more sombre note, we pause at Hiroshima to reflect on the devastation caused by the first atomic bomb in August 1945 but also to admire the way the city has since been rebuilt and now thrives as the leading city in southwestern Japan. From Hiroshima, we visit the nearby island of Miyajima and the lovely Itsukushima Shine Shrine with its very famous floating Tori Gate. Now a highlight of any tour to Japan is to travel by bullet train at speeds of up to 320 kilometers an hour or 200 miles per hour. On this tour, we use the bullet train to reach Kyoto, the cultural heart of Japan. Kyoto was the capital city for over 1000 years and still home to many of Japan's most iconic traditions, such as the custom of the geisha, the wearing of the kimono and the very precise rituals of the tea ceremony. All of these we'll experience during our time in Kyoto. Kyoto 
is also home to the highest density of shrines and temples anywhere in Japan. For example, the stunning but minimalist Kinkakuji Temple, also known as the Golden Temple, set in its tranquil gardens and surrounded by water to show off the golden reflections. Perhaps the most spiritually evocative place we visit in Kyoto is the Fushimi Inari Shrine. It's in a beautiful setting with 10,000 vermilion painted tori gates. These gates represent the, the journey from the everyday world into the spiritual world. Driving north, we come to Kanazawa and visit Kenro Kenrokuen. This is one of the so-called three great gardens of Japan. These traditional Japanese gardens are designed very specifically to combine plants, rock and water to create simple and clean lines for the eye to enjoy, reflecting tranquility and peaceful contemplation. Next, we venture into the Japanese Alps. This is a mountainous belt that stretches right across Japan's main island, Honshu, from east to west. And we drive first to the town of Takayama, pausing along the way to explore this town pictured here, Shirakawagu, with its traditional 300-year-old thatched farmhouses. As you see from the picture, the pitch of the farmhouse roofs is very steep, and this is because this is one of the snowiest regions in the whole of Japan, where normally, in a normal winter, they'd expect 10 metres of snowfall. We stay nearby at Takayama, a traditional mountain town with many of its Edo period buildings still built and still upright and still intact. And this area here, Takayama, is also famous for its beef. Um, it's said to be the best beef in Japan, possibly in the world. The cattle is reared in the local area in the pristine mountain wet meadows, and uh, for that reason, is, is absolutely delicious. And we'll definitely get a chance to try it. We also visit the nearby 16th century Matsumoto Castle. This is known as the Crow due to its very dark wooden exteriors. Now this more rural region of Japan is also perfect for getting close to some of Japan's deep-rooted traditions. We visit, for example, a miso house to learn about how to make miso paste, the staple ingredient in Japanese cuisine. We also go to a wasabi farm, pictured here, to learn about how wasabi is produced. Plus we learn how to make washi paper in the traditional Japanese way, and we visit a samurai house to learn the culture and customs of the samurai. From Nagano, the city that hosted the 1998 Winter Olympics, we make a side trip to visit the Japanese macaques, best known as the snow monkeys at Yudanaka, bathing in their hot springs. These are the most northern dwelling of all the monkey species in the world and can only manage in these climates because of the thermal springs. These snow monkeys are famous for their intelligence. They've learned not only how to stay warm in the thermal waters, but also how to wash their food before eating it. And they sometimes even roll snowballs just for fun. From the Japanese Alps, we head south to Mount Fuji, Japan's highest mountain at 3,776 meters. This iconic mountain is intimately connected with so many aspects of Japan's history, its culture and its identity. We spend a full day in the area with a cable car ride from Hakone and a boat trip on Lake Ashi, both with lovely views of the mountain and the surrounding landscapes. Finally, the tour ends at Tokyo with two full days to take in the best of the city. Few other places combine the ultra modern and the ancient so effortlessly as Tokyo. We visit the 634 meter high Tokyo Sky Tree, the tallest tower in the world and the second tallest building in the world, with stunning views out across the city in all directions. We also walk over the iconic Shibuya Crossing, symbol of modern Tokyo and where up to 3,000 pedestrians can cross the road simultaneously. But there's time too to visit old Tokyo. For example, the Sensoji Temple, pictured here, which dates right back to the 7th century. This is the oldest and most sacred site in the city. 
So that brings us to an end of the Japan Uncovered tour. Because the tour is so varied and so comprehensive, it has become our most popular tour to Japan, as I said. Some of the departures in autumn this year and spring next year are already full or close to full. So all that remains for me is to say thank you very much for your time today and to wish you all a happy Sakura or happy cherry blossom season. Thank you and goodbye. So yes, ladies and gentlemen, on our Japan Through the Season show, this is a segment I know that you've been looking forward to. We are talking everything sumo wrestling here in Japan. And I'm here with Lee Holden. Lee is Head of Marketing at Wendy Wuchers. Lee, great to see you. Hi, Andy. Great to see you too. Now, I understand, Lee, you are a bit of a fan of the <laughs> sumo season in Japan. Tell us about it. Well, an amateur fan, Andy, by, by no means an expert, but... Sumo is just so woven into the culture of Japan that any trip to the country without seeing it, you're really missing out. So it's the only place in the world where sumo is practiced professionally. It's the national sport of Japan as well. So sumo has been going on since Japan since at least 600 AD. They think maybe even further back, maybe 2000 years. So it's an incredible historic institution. It's this great kind of combination of culture, sport, excitement. It really is kind of Japan all wrapped up. It's a fantastic experience. And what is it actually like, Lee, when you're there at, at one of these tournaments? Well, the tournaments, there are six grand tournaments that go on through the year. They all last 15 days each, and each day actually lasts from about 8.30 a.m. through to 6 p.m. So you turn up at one of the great tournament sites. The most famous one is in Tokyo. Holds about 11,000 people. It's full of ceremony, the, the sumo wrestlers parade on in their elaborate costumes. Every bout, um, they come on. The bouts themselves last a couple of seconds in terms of actually fighting. So, but the, the pre-rituals are all really interesting as well. So lots of the rituals before sumo, you might have seen them coming up onto the doyo, onto the, the circle there of clay throwing salt, which is an old Shinto ritual. They also cleanse their mouths with spiritual waters as well. And um, lots of these things are taken from Shinto. In fact, actually, the original um, tournaments used to be held in a temple in Tokyo, not far from where the new um, stadium is, actually. So you see all of this ritual, lots of people in traditional costume, the referees, everyone has their own very specific roles and then an explosive two or three seconds of action where the sumo wrestlers are either trying to push each other out of the ring or if any part of you apart from the soles of your feet touches the clay, then you lose. So actually, it's a really great way to sort of sit, look at the culture of Japan, see these interesting mixes here, and then watch the excitement of the crowd as these guys who are absolute superstars in Japan uh, struck their stuff on the clay. It's fantastic. Lee, it sounds amazing. We almost feel like we're there, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> don't we? It sounds brilliant. How can we experience this with Wendy Wouters? Well, there's six main tournaments a year, and uh, they go. there's three of those in Tokyo, and a couple more outside of Tokyo, Nagoya, Osaka. And our tours actually coincide in May and September. Many of our tours coincide with the sumo, sumo tournaments in Tokyo. So on those, uh, we'll take you for an afternoon sumo. So the afternoons are always the best time to go because that's when the better sumo uh, wrestlers are, are competing with each other. So you'll sit down, the guide will talk you through the experience and um, get to enjoy the experience and just chill out with the rest of the, the Japanese people as well. So if you want to know how to see which tours are applicable, just go to the website, the departure dates all have a little sumo sign next to them and it'll tell you what you can see. So it's a really fascinating and immersive way to experience the culture of Japan and you'll see the rest of the tour as well. It's superb fun. Fantastic, Lee. Thank you so much today. You're welcome, Andy. Now, ladies and gentlemen, yes, we all love travelling. I mean, we absolutely love it. And here at Wendy Wooters, yes, we are all very passionate about travelling as well. And we are enjoying the new season, yes, season four of Race Across the World. Why are we enjoying it so much this season? Well, it's because it touches 
on many of our destinations. And as you will have seen from last week's show, the very first episode in this new season, we were in Japan. Yes, Japan was the destination for that first episode. Brilliant indeed. So yeah, the show is going out on BBC One every Wednesday night. You can also watch it on iPlayer as well. We're all hooked on this, we're loving it. Now, when he returns, we are going to be doing our own take on Race Across the World every Thursday morning as well, the day after that episode. And this show, very special show, is going to be, t go is going to be called Race Across the World Take Woo. Yes, it's Take Woo's version of Race Across the World. We're going to be chatting about the episode, what we like, what we didn't like, who we think is going to win the actual season itself. It's going to be really fun. Now you can catch Take Woo Race Across the World live on Facebook on the Thursday morning, the day after the episode goes out on the Wednesday evening. And you can also catch it on our website as well, on the Wendy Wooters website. Please do watch it. It's going to be great fun. You can see the first one already, the first episode of Take Woo. And when it's live on Facebook, we'd like you to interact as well, to join in the chat and the conversation. Tell us what you like, what you don't like. And again, let's take a poll on who we think is going to win season four of Race Across the World. So, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're enjoying this journey through Japan, Japan through the seasons. We've seen so far, we've seen spring cherry blossom. We've seen the amazing sumo wrestling. And now we are going into autumn. Yes, those beautiful, the reds, the oranges of the autumn leaves in Japan. Let's take a closer look at this very special season. everyone. So Japan Uncovered, as you've heard, is a really wonderful tour which focuses on all of the highlights on the island of Honshu. But of course, as the number one tour operator to Japan, we don't just offer one tour. We actually have 11 tours to Japan and they range from eight up to 21 days, taking in all the famous highlights, but also taking you to some off the beaten track wonders. You can choose to explore from Kyushu down in the south up to the north in Hokkaido. And I'm going to tell you a little bit more now about three of our other tours to Japan, which will show you a slightly different side of the country. The first tour is Japan and the Scenic South. And like Japan Uncovered, this tour takes in all the highlights of Honshu. So you'll visit Hiroshima, Kyoto and Tokyo, but it also explores the beauty of the lesser known island of Kyushu in the south, where you'll find active volcanoes, hot springs, and an island that has its own unique culture. This tour starts on the island of Kyushu, and we fly into Fukuoka. Well, Fukuoka is actually the closest port to mainland Asia, and it's geographically closer to Seoul than it is to Tokyo. It's always been a really cosmopolitan of Japanese cities. Whilst there, we're going to explore beautiful classical gardens, visit one of the country's most important shrines 
and enjoy a cruise on the Yanagawa River, which is just magical, especially if you're lucky enough to go in the spring when the banks are full of cherry blossom. You'll also visit the magnificent Kumamoto Castle, which is widely regarded as one of the three premier castles in Japan. Then you're off to see Mount Aso, a huge active volcano. It's spectacular, one of the largest craters in the world, and it's surrounded by other active volcanoes, so the views are really incredible. And from there, we head northeast to Beppu, which is one of Japan's most famous hot spring resorts. It's set between the ocean and volcanic mountains, and the area is home to more than 2,000 onsen, which are traditional spa resorts. And in fact, we'll stay in a hotel with its own onsen facilities, so you'll all be able to enjoy a hot soak and soak away any aches and pains and tiredness. And from there, we move on to Honshu, the main island, and then we'll start to explore all of the delights of that island, which Peter has already told you about. The next tour to tell you about is Japan by Rail. Japan by Rail is our most comprehensive tour of Japan. It's a full 21 day tour, packed with sights, packed with experiences. You'll be traveling mainly by bullet train. And on this tour, you'll take in the highlights of all three of Japan's main islands, Kyushu in the south, Honshu and Hokkaido to the north. We'll start in the south, as on our last tour, flying into Fukuoka. We then visit both Nagasaki and Hiroshima, where you'll be able to visit some moving museums and also some beautiful gardens. We then move over to Honshu and take in all of the highlights that Peter talked about earlier. Kyoto, Osaka, Nara, Mount Fuji, Tokyo, but the time that you've got on this tour means you'll be able to see even more. We'll cruise on Matsushima Bay, we'll enjoy a tour of the Nikka Whiskey Factory, and then we'll move on to the island of Hokkaido in the far north. Now, Hokkaido is far more sparsely populated than the rest of the country. And again, it has its own unique culture and it's a part of Japan that few people visit. So it's a real treat. Now, Japan by rail is packed full of experiences and you will have so many opportunities to really immerse yourself in the culture. You'll get to try your hand at making momiji manju, which are little buns that look like maple leaves. You'll learn how to make sushi. You'll decorate your own sake cup to take home as a souvenir whilst learning all about the significance and the history of the drink. You'll witness traditional tea ceremonies. You'll enjoy a calligraphy lesson. You'll try your hand at fan painting. You'll try Zen meditation. The list goes on. Wendy Wu Tours loves to pack your tours full of these experiences. Remember, they're all included in your fully inclusive tour price and they really are exclusive once in a lifetime experiences. And finally, on to tour number three. If you want to really get off the beaten track and get under the skin of modern and historic Japan, then the tour for you is Offbeat Japan. Offbeat Japan is one of our go beyond tours. And that means you'll be traveling in a slightly smaller group. These tours are all about getting off the beaten track and having some quite unique experiences. Of course, on this tour, you will see the iconic highlights, Tokyo, Kyoto, Mount Fuji, and so on. But this tour is really about immersing yourself in the culture. Japan itself has such a fascinating mix of the old and the new, the ancient traditions, and then the new modern world, the technology. In one day on this tour in Tokyo, we get to try our hand at the traditional art of taiko drumming. Then we go and visit the famous Meiji Shrine. And there's other experiences too. So on this tour, you will learn to dress yourselves in a kimono. You'll be able to try origami. And of course, witness a traditional tea ceremony in Kyoto. And wherever you go in Japan, if there's a regional dish, our guides will find you an opportunity to try it. One of the really special highlights on this tour is a visit to Koyasan. It's a very spiritual part of Japan and you'll get to spend the night in a 13th century guest house. 
You'll wake up early with the monks and join them for their morning prayer, listening to their chants. It's such a magical experience and such a special opportunity. So hopefully that's given you a little bit more information about some of our other Japan tours. You're spoiled for choice. And if you need any more help deciding which one's for you, give us a call and our reservations team will be able to answer your questions and help you find the tour that suits you best. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're enjoying today's show. It is spectacular. Now, solo travel, ladies and gentlemen, it's on the rise. It's huge. Did you know this year 70% of the population are going to take a solo travel holiday? It is really big. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm joined by Wendy Wooters, Customer Services Manager, Jimmy. Jimmy, great to see you. Great to see you as well. How are you? Very well, very well indeed. Now, Jimmy, I understand last year you went on a solo travel holiday I with Wendy Wooters. I did, and it was absolutely amazing. I went on a tour called A Week in Japan, which was seven days in Japan, seeing the best of everything. I absolutely loved it. I was with a group of um, people. Uh, some people were solo travellers, just like me. There were couples of people from the UK, from Australia, from Ireland. It was just an amazing week. We had a blast. And how easy was it travelling around when you, when you were there? Did you have to do things yourselves? Absolutely nothing ourselves. Everything was done for us. We had an amazing guide who looked after us from the minute we woke up to the minute we went to bed at night. Everything was catered for. The meals were all catered for. The lunch, we didn't have to think about where to eat, what to do. It was all done for us. It was great. It was one week I didn't have to use my brain. It was amazing. Sounds great. Now, I know, ladies and gentlemen, you may be sitting at home thinking, mm, like the sound of it, I'm tempted, but I'm not quite sure. Will I be safe as a solo traveller, Jimmy? Probably the safest I've ever felt in a country in my life. Japan is super safe. The locals were amazing, they were so polite, they were so friendly. From when we woke up, we were just completely looked after by Wendy Wooters from the minute we woke up to when we went to bed at night. Now I believe, Jimmy, as well, there's different ways that you can travel with Wendy Wooters. That's right, as a solo traveler. that's right. You can either well. go on one of our dedicated solo tours, um, or you can go on a main tour as a solo passenger, and um, travelling with other couples, with groups of friends, all age groups. The one that I went on with people from their 30s up to people in the 70s or 80s. So it was a great mix of people on the tour that I went on. I wouldn't hesitate to go on a solo tour again. Now I know Jimmy and yes ladies and gentlemen at home you're probably sitting there thinking yeah I quite fancy doing a solo travelling holiday but I've got my partner what do I do? Isn't it true Jimmy that actually a lot of solo travel travellers are actually in couples? Yeah I decide to yeah, do it. I'm in a couple as well and I went on a solo tour because me and my partner have got completely different things that we enjoy. Japan was always on my bucket list, so that's the reason I wanted to go to Japan on the solo tour. And even though I was on my own, I didn't feel like I was on my own because there were a few other solo travellers on my tour and also couples and we bonded from the day that we met right up until the very, very final day of the holiday. I'm still in contact with some of the people from the tour, I've made lifelong friends, it'd be great. Amazing. And I guess if you're in a couple, you go back home and you've got lots to talk about. Exactly, and you bore your partner with all the photographs <laughs> and the videos and everything. So that's what I did for a week when I got back, kept showing all the things that we got up to in Japan, which was just an immense experience. We were up from the minute we woke up in the morning to we went to bed at night. The whole time traveling, it was just an amazing experience. Sounds great, Loved sounds it. great. Now, Jimmy, again, when you're traveling food, ladies and gentlemen, we love our food when we're on holiday. As you can see. <laughs> Absolutely, food is a, is, a, is a key thing. But how does that work as a solo traveler? Are you left to your own devices? Absolutely not. You all go into the restaurant together, you all sit as a group together, you all eat together, you're socializing. I learned so much from the Australian people who are on the tour, from the New Zealand people on the tour. We all ate as a group and we didn't have to think for where we were going to eat. It was all laid on our wonderful guide to us to the restaurants where the food was all ready for us when we got there. It was brilliant. So Jimmy, obviously you are a big fan of solo travel. 100%. I love solo travel. I really want to do another one this year. So I've got to ask you, Jimmy, ladies and gentlemen at home, what would you say to our viewers who are watching thinking, kind of like to do it, but not quite sure? Don't be nervous. Take the plunge. You will make friends for life like I did. I loved every single minute of it. Every single minute. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Jimmy. Thank you. I've been very fortunate that I've had two long tours already with Wendy Wu, four weeks in China and four weeks in South America, both on my own, and they were absolutely fantastic, to the extent that I almost don't want to travel with any other company now, 
because I just feel everything is so well organised from the initial booking to getting safely back to England. The guides are superb. The range of activity suits me perfectly. So there's some history, some geography, quite a lot about the culture of the area, uh, the opportunity to try things, whether it's dance, music, cooking. Um, every day brings a new delight, really. And I do feel so well looked after. If there's any sort of problem, like in the run up to this trip, I was worried about COVID and what would happen if I tested positive, what would happen if I had to isolate and the logistics department answered all my queries immediately and was so reassuring and made me feel confident that people would help me every inch of the way and that has been the case actually it's been marvelous to be so well looked after i love that the the meals are included so i don't need to start wandering around at night on my own trying to find somewhere for dinner in a strange area I love it that all the entries are included, so there's not this big debate about should I, shan't I? How much is it going to cost? How much money do I need to take with me? I've hardly spent anything, to be honest, just incidental expenditure. Uh, so I think the, the value for money, which is not my, my main priority, but it is also extremely good. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're enjoying this spectacle today, Japan through the seasons. We've witnessed and enjoyed the colourful cherry blossom in Japan. We've enjoyed those beautiful reds and yellows and oranges of the autumn leaves in Japan. And now it is Christmas in Japan. Yes, Christmas. Have you made your Christmas plans for this year? Well, if not, Christmas in Japan may be just for you and here to tell us more about it, Peter Crane, Global Product Director at Wendy Returns. Peter, great to see you. And you, Andy. And you. Loving the sound of Christmas in Japan, Peter. Tell us more about this. What? Why Japan for Christmas? So, Andy, for for the connoisseur, for people who who like to travel to a destination outside the peak season, when the sites are a little bit quieter and there's uh, there's there's more opportunities to take in the culture, the sites, the the history of the place. Christmas is perfect. Um, it's, it's, um, it's a season, obviously, um, a northern hemisphere country, so there's a lot of a good chance of snow on the ground in places like um, Kyoto, even up in Tokyo, and on the mountains all around you, certainly there'll be snow covering on Mount Fuji, especially completely coated with snow, with snow at this time of year, and also clearer and drier in the winter than the summer. So there's a good chance of seeing this, the iconic silhouette of Mount Fuji with a snow with a snow cap in December at Christmas time. Now I know Wendy Routers, ladies and gentlemen, Wendy Routers don't do anything by half. So there's always something really special. Peter, what makes this trip so special? This Christmas in Japan. It's is we plan the itinerary so that it's really somewhere remarkable on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day and Boxing Day. Those three days um, will be. Um, days you remember forever, not like you know some Christmases that blend into all the rest. These will be special days. So on Christmas Eve on this tour, um, you'll you'll be in Kyoto, which is as you as you know Andy, the cultural heart of Japan. It's the city of uh, hundreds of temples and shrines. And on Christmas Eve, we we visit a handful of the of the temples and shrines, but we also get under the skin of Japanese culture with a, a Japanese tea ceremony and we learn the traditional Japanese art of origami. Um, in the evening, we visit the Fushimi Inari Shrine, which is probably the most spectacular of all the shrines in Kyoto, with the 10,000 red vermilion tori gates, which you can walk up to pass through these gates up to the temple shrines. Really spectacular place, and no better, no more remarkable place to be on Christmas Eve than that. On Christmas morning, You'll wake up and visit the, the Zen gardens at Ryanji Temple, which are just an extraordinary, peaceful, calm place, um, beautifully ornate, ornately designed and si um, simply laid out Zen gardens. Then go on to visit the Golden Pavilion, Kinko Kikokuji Temple, which is surrounded by its lake. If we're lucky, there'll be snow on the, on the gardens around the temple, potentially even ice on the lake. It's a remarkable sight at any time of year. In winter, especially if there's a blue sky, it is just unbelievable. So that's Christmas morning. In the afternoon, we jump on the bullet train and head down to um, Hiroshima, 
and do a, a dinner cruise on Christmas evening on the H Hiroshima Harbour, a spectacular harbour, a natural harbour um, on Christmas Day in the evening. Boxing Day, another highlight, we visit Miyajima Island, the shrine of Miyajima on this beautiful um, island location is just very dramatic, very peaceful, a lovely place to be on Boxing Day. We visit Miyajima and then return to Hiroshima and round off the weekend with uh, a visit to the Hir Hiroshima Peace Park, which obviously commemorates the, uh, the atomic bomb at Hiroshima. Peter, it sounds amazing. Ladies and gentlemen, what a way to spend Christmas. Christmas in Japan, seeing those iconic sites, those excursions, those activities. Peter, it sounds amazing. I know I'm going to be booking for Christmas this year. Sounds great. Peter, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. gentlemen what an amazing show we've seen today on this very special Japan through the seasons travel show it has been an absolute blast today so ladies and gentlemen now it's time for our VIP travel lounge yes if you scroll down on your screen to the red button click the red button and you will be taken directly into the VIP lounge this is your opportunity, ladies and gentlemen, to meet, get up close and personal with the travel experts themselves. You can ask them all the questions that you want to ask about anything from today's show, anything on traveling in Japan with Wendy Wu Tours. Yes, it really is a great opportunity. And it's also great to meet fellow travelers as well. Yes, we'll have some good conversations going in the lounge. I'll be there in, in the lounge. Yes, your host, Andy from Wendy Wu Tours. I look forward to seeing you there. Let's go. We found Wendy Wu to be spot on from start to finish. With all the actual interactions from the booking to the preparation for the trip to arriving at the airport, it's been painless and faultless. Wendy Wu, they really do look after you. I've been on other tours before and um, yeah, Wendy Wu definitely includes sort of a lot more, makes it a lot easier. Um, I liked the idea of what Wendy Wu offered. They have a, an excellent reputation. Um, so I looked at a number of other tour companies, but Wendy Wu seemed to be the best. Uh, everything being included is really important. Uh, it makes it very, very easy uh, and you don't have to worry. I just felt confident that um, that Wendy we would know you know the best places to go and the best things to do and uh, it's proved, proved so far on the trip it's proved correct. I've been really impressed 
with not only um, right from the start when I uh, rang up to book, the people, the staff in the office were really helpful, um, just kind of organising things and um, making sure that we got all the right paperwork in. Our national escort was Lily. Uh, Lily's been fantastic, uh, so full of energy uh, and so helpful. She calls us uh, Lily's family. She's always referring to us as Lily's family. Um, and I think she's really helped us actually bond as a group, which made the whole trip much more enjoyable. The Great War was extraordinary. Um, it genuinely brought tears to my eyes, looking out and seeing, understanding the history, and just seeing how it was built in inhospitable terrain um, across the mountain ridges. It was, it was awe-inspiring. When we staff, the, the local guides, uh, our national guide, Lily, They've been more than helpful on many occasions and they have done absolutely everything they can to ensure that, that we've had the trip of a lifetime. I um, hugged a panda, which was an amazing experience and one that I will never forget. I recommend Wendy Wu tour to everybody and uh, tell them that uh, if they want to go to China, nobody better than Wendy Wu tour. I will recommend Wendy Wu. It's been a terrific experience with them. I've been very pleased. Oh, fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. I'd recommend it to people that want to go on an adventure and a, a, you know, visit somewhere they'd now probably only see once, um, but to see the authenticity rather than just the tourist highlights that you could see internet. I will certainly recommend uh, Wendy Wu tours when I go back to England. Um, in fact, I'm sure we'll be going on more Wendy Wu tours because we, we want to go to Vietnam uh, and other places and I'll see Wendy Wu do those tours. So we'll certainly be booking again with Wendy Wu.